Good morning everyone and welcome to another RF Crypto video. Today's markets have gone down 3.85% but it's not as down as it was during the night time. There has been some recoveries that have been made in the price of Bitcoin and in the crypto market in general. If you can see here we see a dip and then a small but significant increase and it, this is significant because it is a sign that it's reversing the trend. The rest of the market it's all in the red they're not performing very well. Dogecoin is down by 11% and this is obviously due to the fact that people are dumping the coin due to it being a meme coin. As you know the price of Dogecoin yesterday went up by about 30% due to Elon Musk's purchasing of Twitter and that sent a buying frenzy where people just invested a lot thinking that Dogecoin is going to go up due to its potential implementation on Twitter because Elon Musk likes it so much. But with anything with a coin that has no utility we saw the prices drop back. Obviously it hasn't dropped by 30% which was the increase yesterday but still 12% uh, decrease is pretty massive and week on week it's down by almost 2%. So looking at all the coins everything is basically down. Bitcoin is down now standing at 39,000. We saw Bitcoin break the $40,000 resistance level and there was some promise because there were a couple of green bands going up what they wanted was the price of Bitcoin to go down below 38,000 so they can make massive profits due to the fact that all these bears are probably in short leverage positions which benefit if the price goes down. It tested the $38,000 support level and it seemed like it was going below it going down to 35,000 however the bulls came back and pushed the prices up and now it's stabilized in trading between 38 and 40,000 actually it's right in the middle of that band at 39,000. So it's an interesting development. We see a lot of breaks in support level and resistance level. We see it going up and then a few days later it goes down and it goes down further and it goes up and it goes down and it goes up. So it is quite like a cycle of consolidation because the prices might be going up and down but if you look at the long run the prices are quite stable. They haven't gone down much. If you look at about two weeks ago the prices were about 39,600. Today they're 39,000 which isn't a big change. It's just the daily volatility that is quite large. We will see the world's first combined Bitcoin and gold exchange traded product listed on SIX in Switzerland. So the world's first exchange traded product or ETP that combined exposure to Bitcoin and gold has been listed on the Swiss SIX exchange. So the Bytree Asset Management Bold ETP will track a customized benchmark index comprising Bitcoin and gold which rebalances on a monthly basis according to the comparative volatility of the two assets. So whichever is less volatile over the past 360 days will be given a higher weightings. And this is basically to stabilize the price of this ETP. So if something is less volatile, it means that the prices will change less, meaning that you give it higher weights so that the lower weight product or the one that has higher volatility doesn't affect the price so much. If it goes down a lot, we have that higher weighting on the less volatile product to help stabilize the losses. At launch the weighting will be 18.5% Bitcoin and 81.5% gold. It gives exposure to gold and it gives a small exposure to digital gold. And because Bitcoin's weighting is so little and gold's weighting is high and gold is less volatile, then we will see the ETP following the gold's price more closely than Bitcoin's price. And while crypto ETPs have become widespread in Europe with over 70 now listed, Bold appears to be the first one that combines Bitcoin and gold exposure. And this is what I was talking about a few days ago about innovation. There's a lot of innovation going on in the crypto universe and in financial products relating to crypto. And this is just one more example. Also, Bitcoin has often been compared to gold due to its perceived benefits in portfolios as an inflationary hedge and investment products that combine the benefits of the two while offsetting some of their risks could therefore prove popular as inflation in Europe hit 7.5%. So if you have something that's an inflationary hedge and you combine it with something else that has the same characteristics, then your portfolio is safe for inflation because you're hedging against that 7.5% increase. So Cardano's network developers increased the block size by 10%. Before the weekend, an update proposal was made to increase Cardano's mainnet block size by 8 kilobytes. The current block size is 80 kilobytes and it will now be 88. So what blocks are? They're batches of transactions that are confirmed and recorded on a blockchain. Larger sizes mean more transactions can be included in each batch, but it can affect transaction times and overall network capacity. Because if you have 
more transactions in one batch, it puts more strain in the system. So if the system isn't ready for such an increase, 10% is a massive increase, by the way, then it can become overloaded, the servers can crash, transaction times become longer, and the gas fees will go up to compensate for the congestion. So this step comes ahead of Cardano's eventual Basho upgrade, which would introduce sidechains on the network. And these sidechains are basically a separate blockchain network that connects to another blockchain called the parent blockchain or mainnet via a two-way peg. So the parent blockchain or mainnet being Cardano. And there are a lot of parachains or sidechains that were sold for this Cardano's Basho upgrade. And it hasn't come online yet. But there is promise that this will change the way people see Cardano in the crypto universe because now you're able to own your own chain that is connected to Cardano and runs on its mainnet. So New York State Assembly passes ban on Bitcoin mines that don't use green power. They're proposing a two-year ban on an all-new proof-of-work cryptocurrency mining facilities in the state that use carbon-based fuels to power their operations and also they'll prevent the renewal of permits issued to existing proof-of-work cryptocurrency miners using carbon source energies if they seek to increase the amount of electricity consumed. The bill gathered support it needed to pass with 95 in favor and 52 against and it will be now carried for a vote in the state senate. If successful then it will be delivered to governor Kathy Hochul who can then veto the bill or sign it into law. So there are two more steps for this to be signed into law and hopefully it does get signed into law. In people's minds this might be really really bad because it might seem like the government is imposing regulations on the companies and on the industry. However, you have to think about the fact that Bitcoin mining and proof of work by extent is very energy intensive and it wastes a lot of electricity. So it can only be a good thing if you ban the use of carbon related energy sources for the mining of Bitcoin because then it will incentivize these Bitcoin miners to look at green energy to power their machines. And they will look at green energy and they will find the solution because Bitcoin mining is still extremely profitable. And this is a win-win situation because, first of all, it reduces the carbon emissions in the atmosphere because of these miners switching to green energy. It leads to the evolution and potentially revolution of the green energy industry because crypto miners are very, very innovative in finding ways to get energy from green sources that are cheap, scalable and intended for widespread use. So these technologies that they might develop might become widespread and mainstream. For example, governments might adopt them in order to generate electricity for their countries. And also it changes the narrative in the cryptocurrency universe. Bitcoin is always seen as a dirty cryptocurrency due to the fact that it releases a lot of greenhouse gases in terms of mining. If we can change this narrative to turn Bitcoin into like a green coin, then it will lead to a lot more adoption because a lot more people will want to be invested in Bitcoin because now they stay away from it due to its environmental concerns. So this regulation and this bill is a win-win for everyone in my books. So the Brazilian Senate approves Bitcoin law to regulate cryptocurrencies. They passed the country's first bill governing cryptocurrencies, which will set stage for the creation of a regulatory framework for the country's crypto industry. The bill must be approved by the Chamber of Deputies and signed off by the President to become a law in the country. And there's not much pushback against this bill and it seems like everyone agrees that it is something that is necessary. So it is expected that the signing of this bill into law occurs at the end of 2022, which is around the corner. And this will set stage for a proper, proper regulatory framework for Brazil's crypto industry. So senators also discuss incentivizing crypto miners to open up shop in Brazil since there will be complete tax exemption for the import of ASIC mining devices. So these are the computational powerhouses that mine Bitcoin into the country. Also, they stated that cryptocurrency market needs specific regulations so that institutional investors who are averse to risk feel encouraged and protected by investing in crypto mining in South America's largest country. They also want to impose penalties for cryptocurrency crimes, which should be scaled to the amount of fraud, money laundering, and the white collar crimes that are committed. And all of these regulations that they're discussing in terms of tax exemption on ASIC machines, specific regulations for cryptocurrencies to encourage firms to invest in the industry, and strict penalties for financial crimes relating to crypto is proving to be a good concoction of laws and regulation that if they form a framework based on these, it will lead to a lot more adoption and a lot of companies flocking into Brazil 
wanting to establish their Latin American or even their American headquarters there. Also, it will lead to a lot more financial companies, asset management companies, and just companies in general that, wants to, that want to add to their balance sheet to invest in cryptocurrencies. Not only that, it will lead to adoption of cryptocurrency by the general public, opening this market up to almost 200 million people. And if they can get this regulation right, learning from the mistakes of places like India and the United States, then they can become a massive, massive crypto hub. And this is combined with United Arab Emirates, who are also implementing conducive regulation that will allow mass adoption and the development of the blockchain industry. So Brazil and the UAE are two places to keep an eye on for the foreseeable future in terms of them becoming global crypto hubs. And with that, we come to the end of today's video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, hit the subscribe button and share this video with your family and friends. Invest wisely and cheers.